This is Fairphone 4, the phone that sets out to be different from the rest. With up to 5 years warranty, long-term software support and ease of repair, this sounds like a phone you truly own. As well as being good for you, it's also more sustainably made. Included is just the phone and some paperwork. To no surprise, there isn't an included charger, but Fairphone has taken it a step further with no USB cable either. I hope your old one isn't worn out either because Fairphone charges 60 euros or around 90 Australian dollars for an official charger and cable. The first of this phone's problems is actually purchasing one. You can buy directly from Fairphone if you live in the EU or UK, but if you live elsewhere, they won't sell you their product. I can't imagine the logistics and legislation that you would have to abide by just to sell a product, so I can somewhat understand this, but for a phone maker that's been around for almost a decade, it seems strange. As of this, it took me two years just to get one for this video. Emails to Fairphone directly or through someone who had been talking to their PR team got me nowhere. Usually buying the phone is the easy part of these videos. When one appeared on eBay from the UK for 909 Australian dollars, I just had to have it. This particular model is the grey colorway with 128 gigs of storage and 6 gigs of RAM, but a 256 gig model with 8 gigs of RAM is also available. From the outside, it looks pretty standard to a regular phone, but it's how it's built that's different to anything else on the market. And it all starts at the back, where you won't find fragile glass glued into place, but a plastic back that unclips. Inside, things look similar to most Android phones, but with a repairable twist. The addition of some groovy graphics provide info on what each part is, and you won't find a glued-in battery here. It's essentially a modern phone with the opening procedure of an old Nokia. This idea isn't genius, it's something that used to be expected and something that should be made mandatory. Along with being easy to open, you can also buy replacement parts direct from Fairphone. With such a large emphasis on repair, I wanted to follow an official guide to take it apart. The problem, I couldn't find it. Find and fix an issue yourself sounded like the right place to be, and while it pointed you towards purchasing the part, it didn't show me where to find any installation guide. It also wasn't anywhere to be found on the spare parts page. After about 30 minutes, I found it on the quick start manual under watch video tutorials, which pointed to a YouTube playlist with several repair videos. Later, I also found it under a how to section of the support page. The effort is there, but their website is really confusing. An easy fix, but still something worth mentioning. I'll begin by removing the upper section, which according to the graphic houses the camera and earpiece speaker. There is a little access door that once removed reveals three flex cables for the cameras that need to be unplugged. Lifting it out of place, you can see the antenna and camera come out as one piece. This is how Fairphone sell the replacement camera part. While you can separate the cameras, I understand this phone is designed to be simple to repair by everyone. So doing it this way prevents an end user from getting dust or fingerprints over the cameras. Both cameras are 48 megapixels, with the smallest one being the ultra-wide camera. If you only needed to replace the one camera, that option is still possible, as the cameras are not fused into the plastic antenna. I found a hidden image of what appears to be a country. This company is from the Netherlands, so that was my first thought, but it's not shaped like that. Anyone else got any ideas of what it might be? Regardless, I can remove the front camera and earpiece, both of which are not secured with glue. Down at the lower section, I can remove the speaker after its six Phillips screws are unfastened. Attached to the speaker is a vibration motor. With that out of the way, we have access to the USB-C port. One cable is all it takes to get it out. But something is missing. Do you see it? Where's the headphone jack? Well, it seems I wasn't the only one asking. Fairphone made a video about it. For us, it has been a design decision. So in order to make this phone last for five and even more years, it is important that we remove any part of the phone that may break. And since the audio jack um, uh, fulfills a function that can also be done via your charging port, we said, hey, let's bring those two functions together and then let's just put it into one uh, yeah, USB port or connector. So there you have it. One of Fairphone's reasons for its removal is a phone designed to be repairable cannot have a headphone jack because it might break. What do you think? In my video about why companies really remove the headphone jack, I discussed it was to push the sale of expensive, unrepairable wireless headphones. But there's no way the same company that made this phone would release wireless headphones with non-replaceable batteries, right? 
Wrong. Let me introduce you to the Fairphone wireless earbuds. They might be built from some recycled materials, but in the specs, you'll find the batteries are not replaceable by design. However, they do offer hole replacement buds and charging cases, but as both headphone batteries would degrade at a similar rate, you'd likely be replacing both, which would cost only 10 euros less than buying a new set that would also come with a charging case. In my eyes, Fairphone is essentially the alternative phone that's more environmentally friendly, repairable and open. Removing the headphone jack just takes away from that. The midsection of plastic is secured using Torx screws. This area isn't obviously intended to be removed by the end user, so let's see what's beneath. Well, I've just uncovered another hidden feature, dual SIM capability. The second physical SIM slot is missing, but its solder pads are present. This phone is only available with one SIM and one eSIM. I wonder if I was to solder a SIM reader on it, if it would override the eSIM. With nothing visibly securing the motherboard, I tried to lift it out, but it didn't budge. After all, we never did unplug the display, which means its connector must be on the other side of the motherboard. To remove the display, there are eight screws around the perimeter of the phone. Once removed, the screen can be lifted up using a suction cup and plastic pick. Absolutely no glue is holding the screen in place. In fact, with only eight screws holding it down, the screen can be removed without even taking anything else out of the phone. With it free, the one connector can be detached. Looking at the display, it's glued to a plastic frame, and this frame is what then screws onto the phone. A simple, but really well executed design. After the motherboard is out, we're left with just a bare frame with the buttons intact. These are not intended for user replacement, as evidenced by the tape covering them and the lack of a replacement for sale on Fairphone's site. But with that, we've completely disassembled the Fairphone 4. If you've seen any of my other teardown and repair assessment videos, you'll be amazed at just how simple this thing is to take apart. But with some phones, taking it apart is the least of your problems, as the software has been programmed to reject any replacement part that's not installed by the manufacturer. But that's not the case with this Fairphone, and repairability hasn't taken away from the specifications either. This motherboard packs a Snapdragon 750G with 6 or 8 gigs of RAM. While almost having perfect modularity, my only complaint is the three microphones and the proximity sensor are soldered directly onto the board. It's time to get it all reassembled, a process so easy just about anybody could do it. There's no glue to reapply or crazy amount of screws to install. Typical repairs like the display, cameras or charging port only take a matter of a few minutes. You could replace every part of this phone in the time it would take to heat up the adhesive to even be able to open an iPhone or Samsung. With the internals installed, you might have noticed I didn't put the screen on first. Well, with this phone, you don't have to. It can be installed with the heart of the phone still intact. Once its flex cable is attached, I can simply press it down into place and attach the eight Phillips screws. I can now install the 3,900 milliamp hour battery and back cover. With that, we're done. So this is it, the almost perfect repairable smartphone with easy to replace components, a marketplace to buy genuine parts and an unlocked bootloader. This is a phone you really own. If you want to fix it, customize it or flash different software, you can. And before you ask, no, this won't be becoming my new daily driver. Why? Well, with no dual physical SIM and no headphone jack, it fails my basic phone needs. After all, my old phone still works perfectly and does everything I need it to, so needlessly replacing it would be wasteful. Being an EU phone, you might also be wondering, can you even use it abroad? While well, using my Australian SIM works perfectly. In the specs of this phone, you'll find the compatible network bands, so as long as your country has one of these, it should work without issue. And I should mention, a user replaceable battery isn't just about ease of repairability. If you're on a holiday, business trip, or even out camping, you can just swap out a battery in a few seconds and have a fully charged phone. It doesn't seem as though Fairphone sells an external charger, but if they did, you could better utilize that functionality. 
And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the Teardown and Repair Assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.